Archaeological site of Alton Ha, that is not the true name of the city. We do not know because no hieroglyphic writings were discovered here. No stelas, which are some large slabs of stones that the Mayans did writing on. So the name was given to it by the archaeologist that excavated the area, Dr. David Pendergast from the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto, Canada. Now the name Alton Ha comes from the last village that is adjacent to the site, that is Rock Stone Pond, translated into Maya Alton Ha. The name also coincides with a reservoir that the Mayans had dug out. They lined off around it with limestone and yellow clay, and that pond has had water in it from the time of the Mayans up until now. The Mayan civilization here dates back to around 200 years before Christ, and it lasted up until like 900 years after. When excavation was done, the archaeologists believed that this city was used mainly for trading. A lot of resources that we do not have in the country was actually discovered here at Alton Ha. Number one for the Mayans was jade. That green stone, jade, you cannot find it in the country. It comes all the way from the highlands of the Motagua Valley in Guatemala. How many of you have heard about the jade head? The jade head is the largest piece of hard jade object ever to be discovered throughout this Maya world. That piece of jade weighs nine and three quarter pounds and it stands six inches tall. Now to give you an idea how important or how valuable that piece is, it is comparative to diamond. Think about yourself owning a piece of diamond weighing nine and three quarter pounds. <laughs> now that jade head was found right here at this particular Mayan site buried with an elderly priest. Now also what they found here a lot were obsidian, which is a black volcanic rock. We do not have it here. The Mayans use it as sacrificial blades and as knives. What did the Mayans at this city here have that was very important to the others that they did not have? A lot of flint to make arrowhead, spearhead, lighting a fire. Also because of it, the site is only about six miles away from the coast because of its close, close proximity. They believe it was used for the making of salt to preserve their food. And a lot of farming was done because the soil is very good. <coughs> Some of the same stuff that we enjoy today was actually used back in the days of the Mayans. Their staple food was corn, avocado, chile pepper, different types of beans. Did you all know that the Mayans were the first to do, um, domesticate and introduce chocolate to the world? Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so it was Cadbury, Hershey had nothing on the Mayans. Mm -hmm. The cacao bean was actually their form of money. All right? And um, why they believe that the city now was used mainly for trading and not for bigger ceremonies is because no stellas, as I mentioned, was found here or any uh, bar court. Whenever you hear about the Mayans, one of the first things that comes to mind is human sacrificing. No bar court was found here, so they believe that this city had no evidence of human sacrificing. Wherever an archaeologist found the bar court, they believe that the Mayans did human sacrificing, none here. Because they played a religious game on an open area that had walls on each side, in the walls they would have hoops and a ball, a rounded ball was made from the sapodilla tree and they would try to get that ball in those hoops. Now when they were using, doing it, they used body parts like your elbows, your hips, your shoulders, your, but you could not use your fingers. At the end of the game, mainly they sacrificed winners. No ball court, no evidence of human sacrificing. The city was used mainly for trading, like a big market area. There are two main plazas that we'll be going through. We are in Plaza A here. As we go on the tour, we go into the second plaza. It's relatively small comparing to other Mayan sites, but it was found to be one of the richest. In Plaza A here, this was the primary area for trading and ceremonies from 200 years before Christ up to like 450 AD. The most outstanding temple is that one right there. The temple of the green two, or a, um, temple A1, that is connected to A2 and A8. The temple-like part of the building, when the excavation work was done into it, the archaeologists discovered a burial. The ruler had over 300 pieces of jade carvings, necklaces, and pendants buried with him. He nicknamed it the Temple of the Green Tomb when he was done. 
Also in there he found stingray spines. Any idea as to what that was used for? No idea? Acupuncture. Acupuncture. <laughs> now, no evidence of human sacrificing, but what the archaeologists found the Mayans did a lot here were bloodletting rituals. They would pierce the most sensitive parts of their body with the spine from the stingray. A knotted rope would be added at the end. The it would be passed back and forth. The blood would drip on a white cloth. They would then put it in an incense burner and the smoke would go up to appease the dogs. Mm. When they were doing bloodletting rituals and ceremonies for the females, it was your earlobe because you listen peeing into the gods, your nipples because you nurse life. And let me hear from the guys. <laughs> what is the most powerful part of a female? <laughs> that guy over there is it? And it was the tongue that they would pierce, they consider that to be the most powerful part of the female. Alright? And who's correct? Now,